Hey there, Brett with Solarola out on the Pike Chain of Lakes near Iron River, Wisconsin. We're beginning to fulfill our dream of creating a solar-powered electric pontoon. The thing that's always bothered me about boats is the gas. It always smells, you're tubing behind it, and it's like exhaust and stink. You see in the water the oil from it, which can't be good for the fish or any of the plants and environment. So we're pretty excited to make this into electric, and it's so quiet, no fumes. Most people use their boats on the weekends, and all week they're sitting in the sun. So this will be sitting in the sun, charging up all week, and then on the weekends we get in and go have fun. So here she is. Here's the pontoon boat that we are going to solar power and electrify. So we did buy a pontoon last year to do just that. However, it was a nice pontoon. The motor ran good. Everything worked great. And so we decided, eh, maybe we could just find a pontoon that doesn't have a motor. It doesn't have working things. Pay a little bit less and go ahead and just sell our other pontoon boat. Also our other pontoon boat, I think it was only a 20 footer. So we got four more feet on this one. It's a 1980. So we're just one year shy of the 70s, but basically we're kind of keeping that retro theme using the 67 Mercury motor in the back, which is gonna completely hide the electric motor. The batteries will be under the seat. You will see the solar panels, but you won't see the solar cells likely because they'll be pointing up towards the sun. Funny how that works. So as you know, we are in competition with Zach and Jesse of Now You Know. These are great guys. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how far they are. It doesn't matter because we all win here. Doesn't mean we're not gonna push hard, but the fact is we know that this endeavor between uh, both of our groups is going to bring awareness and really push the industry. All right, our big batteries just arrived. Bring them into the shop. You know, at Solarola, we've been building our own batteries from our off-grid back in the, you know, early 2000s when we were using lead batteries to, you know, lithium coming into the picture but you know, just kind of raw cells, you know, like Nissan Leaf cells, for example, we had to build our own BMSs, um, we had to build our own boxes. Uh, I am happy to say that I think those days are over. I think the best use of our time at Solarola is getting the vehicles built and getting the vehicles out to people, but we spend most of our time building the batteries. So I've been looking for a trusted company for a long time where I really feel like, hey, these are the people that could actually, you know, not only build the batteries, um, you know, in a way that makes me feel comfortable, but also take some um, suggestions and make some changes. So this is kind of the start of it for us. You know, we built so many different vehicles and I had to build so many different battery packs, but I'm really excited with this solar powered pontoon boat just to have a battery where the, you know, the, the, the box is IP65, it's, you know, ready to handle water. It's uh, all enclosed, the BMS is all in there, and we actually have five of these. 72 volts, 150 amps continuous, 300 amps for five seconds. So as long as you're not gonna do it too long, you can load them hard, all right? We're not gonna really be loading them that hard, and I don't like to load batteries too hard if I don't have to, but uh, that capability is there. So let's take a look at this thing. I can't wait any longer. All right, are you ready? Oh, look at that beautiful plastic. And there it is, 72 volts of fun. They're about 7.68 kilowatt hours per battery. So let's call it seven, and let's multiply that times five. That gives us 35 kilowatt hours. 
So this, again, like all of our vehicles, it's a power station as much as a pontoon boat or a van. Either way, it's a power station. So five of these babies, they're each about 150 pounds. So that's 750 pounds. So that's quite a bit of weight. It's why I chose the, the size of the pontoon that I did, because I knew we were going to have some battery weight. But ladies and gentlemen, the big battery Raptor 2. Now, when I look at this battery, I think golf cart, because I had a 72 volt golf cart back in the day. In fact, it was what started Solarola, was this 72 volt golf cart, except for the fact that I had gel cells that were really heavy. And if I would have had something like this, whoa, would have been a different world. And let me tell you, 72 volts with this kind of amperage capabilities on a small vehicle like that, pretty quick, pretty fun. And like in the case of Red Foods, you have your solar up there, you rarely have to plug it in. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries, okay? So no thermal runaway issues here. There's just really not as much toxic chemicals in lithium iron phosphate. They have a little bit lower uh, voltage. They're like a 3.2 volt nominal battery where uh, uh, other styles of lithium are right around 3.7 and 3.8. But these are the lithium iron phosphates. They last longer, as I mentioned, safer, and not as toxic. So we're really excited to be working with a big battery on this. They saw the excitement and the importance in this build and the competition and all that and wanted to jump on board. After I asked them, they said yes, and I'm so happy about that, so let's get rolling. We have officially obtained everything that we need to convert our pontoon boat to solar power electric. And when I say everything we need, I don't just mean the bare minimum. I mean everything we need to make a viable pontoon. So there are some folks, and I would like to congratulate them, that have built some electric pontoon boats. But nothing that I have seen has been able to pull a tube. And if I don't pull a tube, I am in trouble. So I have designed this system to replace pretty much the performance of what you would see with a 50 to 100 horse motor on the back of a pretty good sized pontoon. So we wanted to choose a large pontoon because we want to do fun stuff like put a electric cooking grill in there. We want to have a refrigerator. We want to have all those creature comforts that all this energy can easily um, power. So in the back, let's we'll start in the back there with light leaf solar panels. We've had a relationship with light leaf for years now. We've put them on our E-Stars. They've made custom curved panels for us. Um, these here uh, were for an E-Star, but we've decided to use them for the pontoon boat. So we have 3,200 watts, and that would be pretty much the footprint of the entire uh, pontoon. But we, we're thinking maybe we're going to use half of those. So basically two of these large panels, 1,600 watts, that's going to be plenty to pull sunshine into our batteries out there on the lake. Anyway, still not entirely sure there. We'll probably definitely start with um, 1600 watts and depending on various factors, go from there. From the panels, let's go to the motor. So this motor I had laying around and I'm waiting for a project like this. This is a motor that would power a VW bus, so we're thinking it should do just fine powering uh, a much lighter boat. So it is a, an AC50 made by High Performance Electric Vehicles. The same style motor that we've had in our VW bus, our original VW bus, that has been rolling for uh, almost a decade, decade now, I think. So that's what's going in. How are we going to get it in there? Well, first, let's look at our 1967 110 horsepower Mercury Tower of Power. This is the motor that we chose, and the tower refers to the fact that this six cylinder is in line, creating kind of a tower situation. Um, this was 110 horsepower. We're running it at 72 volts. We are going to just be making a, an adapter plate that goes right here where the original motor had bolted in, and we're going to set our electric motor right on top of that. And as you can see, pretty comparable lengthwise to our electric motor. And here is our spline coupler. So there is a, a male spline coming from the, the lower unit on the outboard motor. And this is the female spline that was part of the two-stroke motor. 
This is actually the end of the crankshaft. So take a look at the video where I'm cutting this off. I think I have one tooth left on my slow cut saw blade, so it's kind of a force, but I got it cut, threw it on the lathe, and true it up. So basically this will need to go here. So what we have coming today is a coupler. So it's an inch and an eighth shaft coming out of this uh, electric motor here. And we're going to put a coupler that is an inch and an eighth, which has the keyway. And then we are going to do one of two things. I'm not quite sure yet. Either we will have to mill this down because it's slightly larger. It's about an inch and three sixteenths, 30 millimeter. Or we will take a little bit off the inner diameter of the coupler. Either way, this is going to go, half of the coupler is going to go on this shaft with a keyway. Lock tight those set screws down, and then we're going to press this spline in. We're going to try to get this as straight as possible, because the more these splines move, the more they're going to wear out. So the more true we get this as far as straight goes, the better. So thankfully, I have a little lathe in the back. It is a manual lathe, but it is my right hand for jobs like this, where I need to make sure that things are true. I have my main contactor, here is the controller for the motor, so everything is here. And that's how I like to build. Back in the day when we built our first electric, solar power electric VW bus, I had all the parts in the hallway. And Kira absolutely loved that. She loved the fact that she couldn't walk down the hallway for literally months. She loved the fact that she didn't know what the heck I was doing and what I was spending all of our money on. But now I think after a few years, she started to understand that hmm, these things do actually turn into things. And uh, so now is the time. Now is the time to take all of these parts and put them all together and get out on the water. Let's do it. I really would like to stress to be careful to make sure that you have an engineer on hand, to make sure that you have electricians, to, to really make sure that all your connections are tight or that you do the sufficient research to make sure that you're utilizing not only the batteries correctly, but the motors, the controllers, and everything. Otherwise, it is potentially lethal, and unfortunately, then you just plain wreck your equipment.